Today we are going to try to fix uh, my lathe. This is uh, a little lathe I picked up quite a while ago. I've used it quite a bit. Um, the last time I used it, I burned my motor up. I don't really know how old that motor is, um, but it was smoking, making all sorts of really nasty smells, and it was not happy. It's a half horsepower, 3500 RPM motor. Um, there is a guy local to me that I thought about bringing it to and rebuilding it So I might do that take once I get it taken off, but in the meantime I found this thing on the side of the road up here not too far from my place and um, I don't need the compressor But the motor on this thing Is the exact same. It's a uh, 50 rpm off, but it's still a half horsepower motor 3450 rpm and it's got the same uh, v-belt pulley on it that I need so this thing already works. I've already plugged it in and made sure. And uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this, this motor taken off of here, swap it out with that one, and hopefully get back to uh, making some Delrin bushings. I got an order for some bushings I gotta finish for a uh, truck. I got, uh, well that one fell. That's the only one I got right now, but, oh, there's a mistake. Delrin bushings, something shouldered like that to go you know, inside tube, like so. Um, these are used for stuff like swingers in there. See, like right there, there's some Dalrin bushings in there. Or uh, possibly um, the customer that I got to make some bushings for, they have some Dalrin bushings in their upper link arms. So I'm going to make them a set of some bushings and uh, get them taken care of. So, and also get my lathe back working. So we'll see how this goes. Just like that, she's back up and running. She's a little squeaky, she needs some grease, so I'm gonna pull some of this stuff apart, grease it up, and uh, start making some bushing. I've gotten one pair done. Um, everything's back working. Uh, and actually that motor is, yeah, a lot better than the last one that I burned up, obviously. I think it's been, it was out, it was going out before I burned it up because this thing definitely, uh, it's got more torque again. Uh, able to take bigger cuts, use the feed, drill a lot heavier now. So made light work of uh, spinning up some bushings. Um, but, the only problem is there's no on and off switch for this thing. Um, it's just got a cord on the motor that um, I wired and had to put an end on. But it just has a plug um, that's very old and like, I don't know, getting like, like, that doesn't look good. When you plug it in, it kind of sometimes like arcs across and it's just scary. The ground just broke off of it. So, I think I'm, uh, I didn't really like having to come over here and just every time you want to turn the thing on or off, you got to unplug it in or unplug it. So, it gets really old with, um, you know, I'm using a couple different bits to turn. I'm using a couple different drill bits 
um, using like a center, a smaller drill, and then my bolt size drill and a chamfer tool. So every time I'm changing a tool or doing something like that, I'm shutting the thing off by unplugging it. So obviously that gets old. I just got back from the hardware store and I picked up good old uh, light switch. So I'm gonna wire, uh, throw this box on there, got a little cover, got that light switch that I'm gonna wire up in there so I can actually start turning my lathe on and off with a switch. I can leave the thing plugged in. And then I got a, uh, I got a plug as well with a ground that's not broke, so. I have finished wiring up my uh, little switch in my box here on the side with my motor and uh, I've already fired the thing up and made sure it all worked. Um, I'm not a professional. I don't even know if I'm an amateur, but I just looked up stuff on Google and YouTube just like everyone else and wired us, wired it up and got the new plug on there. Um, now, flip it on, flip it off. Uh, much more convenient. Should have done that a long time ago. We're probably right when I bought the thing, but never did. So, got a new plug on there, got the switch on there, and uh, now I got some material already cut. Got to make uh, quite a few more sets of bushing, so got to get to work and uh, get to use my new switch, so see how good it works. I just finished up uh, all the bushings here, got them packaged up, got the, the lathe all cleaned up from uh, the mess. The stuff goes everywhere, throwing plastic, but uh, man, big upgrade with the switch. Uh, it's amazing. It's little things like that. You just, um, every time I've always used this in the past, I feel like I'm in a rush and I'm just like, got to get these done. Um, but getting that switch wire down there, it just, it's a uh, little things like that make your life so much easier being able to flip something on and off. If you have like a drill press or something like that on a motor, um, put a switch on it, it's amazing. So nonetheless, bushing's done. Same customer has some uh, shocks here that I gotta get done now. So switching over, uh, gonna get some shock work stuff going. Got some kings here that uh, need some attention. Need some hoses replaced. Need these crossover rings replaced and some rebuilds. Also, we're going to be pricing all of the FK bearings in these things. So that's uh, all the parts that I got up here. Uh, got my shock stuff set up, kind of. And uh, yeah, I'll get going on some shock stuff. And maybe I'll show you some different stuff. Um, I kind of do these. I'll end up going throwing in my freezer in my house. Uh, I tend to like to free these a little bit when I press them in. Just, just helps get them lined up for me and square when you're pressing them in to not damage your rod ends. Um, other than that, pretty standard stuff, uh, rebuilds, um, these, you do got to take the top caps off of the shock. So, um, we'll see, maybe I'll show you something there if, uh, come across it, but yeah, no, that's just some, uh, rebuilds and placement parts on some, uh, King shocks, got a pair of coilovers and some bypasses. So.
I got this first kink torn apart and got to the end of it and decided maybe I'd end this video uh, showing a few things that I kind of see quite a bit when I'm working on these shocks and maybe it'll help uh, some of you guys out there when you're taking your shocks in and out of your rig. So um, that is the misalignments and using anti-seize on these. Um, using anti-seize on the, on uh, not the uniball, not this surface in there, but on the edges of these misalignments that go into the uniball here. So that surface, whoops, I'm throwing them around. That surface inside there, um, water gets in there very easily, especially like if you're here out in the dunes uh, with the lake going through the water. Super easy to get water in there, um, especially on the lowers, the lowers that are down closer to your tires. Those uh, get water in there, they rust up, and they just make it super hard to get them apart. A lot of times I have to use vice grips. On these, I'd use vice grips, some WD-40, prying them back and forth, and then once you get one side out, usually uh, take a little tool. This is just a little piece of ground down aluminum. I put in there and then hammer the other side out. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is maybe uh, in the time lapse there, if you saw me using the torch when on the press for pressing these things out, I like to use a socket. I just get a big heavy duty uh, or whatever they call them, an impact socket, that's it. Where they're a little thicker walled, find one that fits, fits this size, um, fits right around there. Cause with that radius, you don't get much to uh, put on there to uh, press against. These ones, you just pull the one out and then you can press them out. Well, once I, I like to put a little pressure on there. I set that on the um, impact socket. I got that that's on the uh, uniball getting pressed and you put a little bit of pressure on them and then i'll take uh just the propane torch there and start heating up this aluminum that's around the uniball holding on to it and a lot of the times you can hear a noise when it releases um you put a little pressure on there and as you're heating this up it'll expand and they kind of like pop and when that happens i just shut it off finish pump, uh pumping the jack and pushing that uniball out and they should come out relatively easy it shouldn't be that difficult this is a steel surface this is an aluminum surface so really it shouldn't be rusted together um it's just if there's crud in there and there's a bunch of rust build up on these that make them a little difficult to come out so anyways i don't know a couple things maybe i see it quite often not really something a lot of people do um take the time but it really does go a long way for pulling your shocks in and out servicing your shocks all that type of stuff anyways I'm rambling. Thanks for watching. We're going to get the rest of these shocks built, rebuilt, freshen them all back up, and uh, we'll move on to the next thing. I think we're back on to uh, the Chuggy and the Silverado project after this. So, Like always, thanks. Peace.